Hi, I'm back as promised. It's August 13th. Actually, it's not. It's August 15th, and these are my beautiful flowers. And I have treats from Heather. Coffee and treats. And I wanted to say before I begin, both a shout out to Heather and Elizabeth for taking such good care of me with my blog and my personal website and my Facebook page. Thank you girls so much. Um, exciting news. I am taking my son tomorrow to Los Angeles for the 20th anniversary of Free Willy. Yes, it's been 20 years and I look exactly the same. And we are walking the blue carpet with Simon Windsor, who was the original director, Jason Richter, Michael Madsen, myself, and it's to celebrate the 20th anniversary, and it's also to promote the movie Keiko, The Untold Story. Keiko played Willie. And my favorite thing about being a mom and playing Free Willie, the mom in Free Willie, is that it made me very popular with fourth graders. I nearly was trampled by a um, cafeteria full of four, fourth graders. And then the other thing that I really love is people would say, oh, you're the mom of Free Willy. And I would say, no, not, not really. That couldn't happen. But yes, I am the mom in Free Willy. So I love that I am the mom in that movie. And I love that um, I'm part of this event because it really isn't such a great idea to um, breed and raise these beautiful creatures in captivity. It's one thing if one needs help and you bring them in and you take care of them and you say hello and then you let them go. And it's another thing to create an environment that is closer to their own. But the whole point of the event is to raise consciousness again that these creatures, the orca whales, shouldn't be in captivity in the way that they are. They shouldn't be bred in captivity. So. I'm on that train. I think that's a, a very good message, and I always have, and I'm very proud of my two Free Willy movies. So um, that's my current event that I'm going to participate in. So I'm excited to go to LA. I'm excited to take my son. And as promised as well, you have asked some questions that I will answer. And then I'm going to give a little acting tip, and then a fun fact for the day. So. Heather. All right, so you're not wearing it today, but you wear it very often. So we have a question about your necklace. Yes, my Star of David, which is actually circled with hearts. There's two, one on the top, one on the bottom. And actually, if you look at it very closely, there's also two on the side. And I got this heart, um, the Star of David heart, in the south of France when I was on a retreat. And it was... A, it was made to represent the balance of the male and female. And the geometry of the Star of David can be seen in, um, supposedly, in our blood and in our DNA. And it is, a, it is the chalice and the blade. And the balance of the male-female is really one of the most important uh, journeys in our life, however you do it in your life. Um, and so surrounding it with love, because it's not an easy journey, is a really good idea. And so that's the symbolism of it, and I wear one, and my husband wears one. And strangely, on July 29th, a, in uh, the astrological worlds, um, what appeared in the astronomy was the Star of David. It's called a tehedron, and it's very unusual. The last time we saw that kind of configuration in the sky, according to the astrologers, was right before World War II ended. It ushered in peace. It ushered in balance and it ushered in a new world and understanding of what it would take to keep peace. So, let's see what happens. So that is the symbolism of my Star of David 
Um, my husband's Jewish. I'm not Jewish. I just see the symbol as something extraordinary, and um, I'd like to see it everywhere. I'd like to see the balance of the male and female. All right. So we had a question from your blog. Yes. Which was, how do you relax before going on stage, and what do you do when you feel overwhelmed? How do I relax before I go on stage? Well, I make sure I'm warmed up, I make sure I'm stretched, I make sure that I, if there's any lines that I'm having trouble with, that I go over them in my script. Um, I do the typical actor thing, I blow my lips out. You see that in movies all the time. I roll my head around, I roll my shoulders around, and uh, shake things out. And um, I think about what I might want to accomplish that particular evening. Let's say there's a moment that I've been working on or a line that I haven't quite gotten right, and that helps to focus me. And then I usually take 15 minutes and I go sit in a chair where there's no one around me and I sit and I usually meditate or I, I say a prayer. And my prayer is, may I be an instrument of the creative force, may everyone benefit in this audience and beyond from my gift of laughter or my gift of expressing the human condition. May everyone in this show be protected and however I end it, I end it. So that helps focus me because what happens when I do that is that it becomes not about me. It becomes a gift that I'm giving and I find being an actor a very sacred thing. So that's what I do to relax. And uh, that's what I do when I'm nervous. And what do I do when I'm overwhelmed? I usually cry. I don't know what everybody else does, but usually a good cry, a good friend, and a strong glass of wine or a cup of coffee. Um, I'm not promoting. I'm not promoting alcohol, but you know, I'm you know, I'm allowed because I'm a certain age and I can have a glass of wine if I want one and relax. Uh, wait, question, what are you going to miss about Criminal Minds? Um, the, fa the family of Criminal Minds. You know, I would only go every couple of months and um, was always, they were always so happy to see me and all the people there just are terrific to work with and um, just finding out what everybody's doing and uh, just being part of a family on a show. Whether I'm there every single day or whether I come in every three months, I'm part of a, a family of artists and I will miss that. And last one on our list for today is, have you ever done Civil War reenacting? And if so, what battles have you done? The answer is no, and I've never done any battles. So those are the questions. I welcome more. My acting tip, I sort of gave a few before, but I've been coaching a couple of young actresses last, this last week, interestingly, and they were doing Shakespeare, and I sort of came up with two things that I think are really kind of great thoughts to have when you're working on a monologue or you're working on a part as an actor. One is start from where you are. So if you're having a bad moment, or you're pissed off that you have a smaller part than you wish you had, or you're scared, or you're um, bored, use that to enter the monologue despite what the monologue is telling you it's about. Use, or the role, go from where you are, because it will inform the piece in ways that will be surprising to you and whoever's watching. And secondly, you bring you to it. And it's much easier to start there than try to say, I'm not supposed to be upset. I'm not supposed I'm not supposed to want the lead. I'm not supposed to uh, be crying right now. Eh. Shoulds, throw them away. Start from where you are. The second thing is, for all you uh, aspiring actors. One of the most uh, amazing things, and think about what you like and who you like to listen to, is staying where you are and allowing an audience to come to you. Have them lean into you. Stay centered, stay where you are, stay with where you are. And and see what it feels like 
to let somebody come to you. Let the audience come to you. It's a very powerful place to be. And I think if you think about the people that you love, that's what you do. You go, oh my God, I can't believe it. Or you go, oh, what is she doing? Or, oh my God, I can't believe they're doing that. You lean in to something. So those are my two tips. And here are my fun facts. Did you know that smiling, it takes less muscles to smile? And secondly, when you smile, I don't care if you're faking it, <laughs> it's really good for your immune system, as well as laughing. So if you wake up in the morning, and I don't know what your day might be like, but if you fake it, if you laugh for a good five minutes, three, one minute, your body and your spirit and your heart are going to feel better. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.